Hello, my name is Dr. Aidan Elliott and welcome to Dr. Aidan's Guide to Literature. This video is entirely focused on the final chapter of the book, Henry Jekyll's Full Statement of the Case, because it explains why Dr. Jekyll decided to transform into Mr. Hyde and how it affected him. So I will analyse the character of Dr. Jekyll in detail and highlight some key quotes that you can use in tests, essays and examinations. Dr. Jekyll tells us that, as a young man, I concealed my pleasures. I stood already committed to a profound duplicity of life. Profound means intense or overpowering. Duplicity means both double and deceitful. So Jekyll was aware from a young age that all humans have at least two sides to them. One side that wants to be respectable and another side that wants to do things that society disapproves of. He thinks it is the curse of mankind to have these two aspects of character imprisoned together in one body. But what if these two sides of our personality could be separated? If each, I told myself, could but be housed in separate identities, life would be relieved of all that was unbearable. Life is unbearable for Jekyll because he wants to do bad things but must pretend to be a good person. If he could separate his bad side from his good side, then he could indulge in activities that society thinks are shameful, but without damaging his respectable reputation as Dr. Jekyll. Notice also the use of the verb housed. This is the idea of a separate place or body. Note also that he has two houses, one for when he is Jekyll and one for when he is Mr. Hyde. He then goes further. He thinks that his outer body is an expression of his inner mind. I recognise my natural body for the mere aura and effulgence of certain of the powers that made up my spirit. Aura means an atmosphere that surrounds someone and effulgence means something that shines through, a radiance. He also says that his body has a trembling immateriality. In other words, his appearance, and this is a key point, is an expression of his dominant inner spirit. So, if he could separate his bad side, then his body would also change. Meaning, he wouldn't be recognised as Dr Jekyll when he did bad things. He then creates a potion that can change him from Jekyll to Hyde. And when his body changes... He says, I felt younger, lighter, happier in body. When he becomes Mr Hyde, he feels different emotions. The evil side of his character feels comparatively young because the evil side of his character had been repressed whilst he was Dr Jekyll. Note he also feels lighter, not weighed down by mental worries, and happier this is surprising. We might not expect someone to feel happy when expressing their evil side. So he felt younger. But what about when he looked at himself in the mirror? He says, I was conscious of no repugnance, rather of a leap of welcome. Repugnance means intense disgust. And he's expecting to feel repugnance as do all of the other characters who actually meet Hyde. But the sight of his new body feels incredibly sweet and gives him an innocent freedom of the soul. Hyde's body is also small. This lets us know that the evil part of his character is underdeveloped. Edward Hyde, alone in the ranks of mankind, was pure evil. Unlike everyone else in the world, Hyde is an expression of pure evil, and the question it raises is this. Now that the evil side has its own physical identity as Mr Hyde, can he keep his two identities separate, 
or will the evil affect the good side? Well, in the persona of Mr Hyde, he's completely focused. He's every act and thought centred on self, drinking pleasure with bestial avidity from any degree of torture to another, relentless like a man of stone. Bestial means like an animal, and avidity means having a strong desire. So he's animal-like in getting his pleasure from hurting people, and he's like a stone. He lacks any compassion. But problems are appearing. When he changes back into Dr. Jekyll, he can remember his evil acts. His evil side is not isolated. It's mixing with his good side, and it's getting stronger. And it gets worse. I had gone to bed Henry Jekyll, I had awakened Edward Hyde. Without taking the potion, he had changed into Mr Hyde. He's lost control of his body. This is the first sign that the evil side of his character is taking over. This is, of course, a metaphor for us. If we indulge in evil behaviours, we will become evil. The next quotation highlights the dilemma he faces. I was slowly losing hold of my original and better self. Although he increased the doses, it becomes more and more difficult to change back from Mr Hyde to Dr Jekyll. He stops taking the potion altogether and determines to remain Dr Jekyll, but he's now in a worse situation than he was before the experiment began. He will have to try and suppress the evil side of his personality after he has allowed it to get much stronger. And for two months he manages to suppress Hyde's personality, but eventually he gives in and he takes the potion. My devil had been long caged. He came out and roaring. My devil means the evil side of his character. Note it had been caged like a wild animal, and it metaphorically emerges roaring. And it is at this point that Hyde murders Danvers Carew. And then, as he sits in Regent's Park as Jekyll, regretting his actions, he spontaneously changes into Edward Hyde. And because he's wanted for murder, he's now forced to hide away, literally acting out his name. The tragic end is reached when Jekyll realises his good side is doomed. I bring the life of that unhappy Henry Jekyll to an end. He discovers that the potion he had been using had been made from impure ingredients, and it was this unknown impurity that had made it work. Now that he has run out of the potion, he will be doomed to remain Mr Hyde permanently. And this is the one occasion, of course, when we know more than Jekyll. We know that Mr Hyde poisoned himself, which is on page 44 of Jekyll and Hyde. So the good side of Dr Jekyll still had enough power over the mind and body of Mr Hyde to kill himself. Although we have to infer this because we have no hard evidence. So do look out for some of these features as you read and study this novel and I hope this brief video has given you some new insights that will help you to get greater enjoyment from Stevenson's Jekyll and Hyde. Give a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and subscribe now so that you never miss any of my future posts.